Hi guys, it is a hot, sticky, miserable midsummer day on the last day of March 2021. That would be Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. And I want to thank Alert Tribes member Kevin for sending me this fine article that's from some, uh, I guess this is some, from some magazine in that has something to do with the Catholic Church. Okay, called this website is called Earthbeat Stories of Climate Crisis, Faith, and Action. So, this is essentially a Catholic Church uh, promoted uh, article. My son, uh, I don't think she is a clueless moron. I, I think she's a lying sack of shit, is what she is. Uh, named Barbara Frazier, whoever she is, promoting this unadulterated horseshit titled, uh, Does Your Personal Ecological Conversion Make a Difference to the Planet? So... I am going, because we all know uh, the answer to the question, does your personal ecological conversion make a difference to the planet? Everyone on this channel already knows it. Let's see how the Catholic Church is spinning this hopium apocalyptimism. <clears throat> all right. Maybe you gave up meat for Lent, turned down the thermostat a couple of degrees, or made a conscious effort to use less plastic. As the liturgical season draws to a close, you may wonder how to make that habit permanent or whether your individual behavior even makes a difference. Given the enormity of the planet's climate emergency. Experts say the answer to that second question is definitely yes, and it is easier to keep up climate-friendly practices started during Lent if you share the journey with like-minded people. Yeah, it's like clueless morons uh, reading this article and believing one word of it. Okay, let's listen to David Downey, who leads the political science department at Jesuit-run Fairfield University in Connecticut. Take it away, Mr. Jesuit. Quote, Individual action really matters because individual action times a million is huge. So every little thing a person does in their own life makes a difference. It's the car they drive. It's the insulation of their home. It is how they use energy and the amount of energy they use, close quote. For Caroline Bader, not to be confused with Carolyn Baker, for Caroline Bader, director of the interfaith group Green Faiths Living the Change Program, Green faith. I thought uh, I thought I'd heard the last of the green washing. We now have the green faith, living the change program. Individual shifts in behavior go hand in hand with advocating for systemic change, and both are needed to transform the world. Quote, quoting Caroline Bader. Quote, it's not an either or, it's yes and. That's very important. One cannot go without the other. For Bader and Martin Kopp, the program's co director, the climate emergency calls people of faith to an integral response involving personal transformation leadership of institutions, and systemic change. That approach echoes 
Pope Francis's emphasis on integral ecology and ecological conversion in his encyclical titled Care for Our Common Home, where the Pope calls for personal conversion, holding up St. Francis of Assisi as a model, but adds that bringing about wider social change must be done by individuals forming community networks, and quoting the Pope, and not simply by the sum of individual good deeds, close quote, said Cop, quote, when it comes to individual choices that can be made, it is important to journey with people toward the behavior change, the behavior change that has the highest impact in terms of emission reductions, close quote. Those areas, those areas of, uh, what, are, what we call that, those areas, those behavioral changes having the highest impact, generally involving transportation, food, and home energy use, are ones in which people can make individual lifestyle changes and also advocate for policy changes. And this is where uh, I, am, I am thrilled to see that this uh, reporter uh, <clears throat> linked us to a study I have talked about many times on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, this study uh, and, and many others similar to it, uh, you know, talking about this issue, which, which is the single biggest lifestyle change you can make. And she actually, they actually link you to it. And we're going to get back to this study in a minute. I'm, I'm going to read a little more of this article. And then we're going to get back to the very study that this article claims it is based on. Okay. Based on a study published in 2017, which examined the effectiveness of different kinds of individual actions, Green Faith suggests steps people can take from getting, from getting rid of their car, one of the most effective, to lower impact changes like switching to a plant-based diet or washing clothes in cold water. Uh, I'm just have to add this. When Kevin sent me this, he was getting a chuckle out of washing your clothes in cold water and I didn't have my right glasses on and I thought what he said was washing your children in cold water, uh, which I have to say, washing your children in cold water, probably a much better solution to the climate crisis than washing your clothes in cold water. Anyway, <clears throat> Downey notes that, m that many steps individuals can take, such as improving home energy use, lower household costs in the long run and can be considered an investment. Nevertheless, said Cop, changing individual behaviors, quote, is not only about delivering climate-friendly lifestyles, it is way, 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 way deeper than that for a person and it is embedded in a spiritual journey, close quote. Cop's own journey began a decade ago when he spent several months in India, in India, and came face to face with that country's environmental problems. Okay, here is a Catholic uh, returning from India talking about the big environmental problems facing India 
which I think now has 1.3 billion people and soon will overtake China as being the most overpopulated country on the planet. So this is how a Catholic reports on the environmental problems that he encountered in India. Quote, the smells, the sheer chaos of Indian cities, the plastic mountains everywhere in the streets, the rivers and the lakes that are bright green, close quote, called for a personal response. He said, Knowing that transportation and food production are two major sources of planet warming greenhouse gas emissions, COP, who lives in France, opted to give up personal air travel and cut back on meat in his diet. A big step for someone accustomed to eating meat at every level. At first, he de decreased his meat consumption to a couple times a week, but could not manage to cut back more. Yes. So, during Lent in 2018, he reduced by half again. At the end of the 40 days, he decided to keep going and now eats meat one day a week usually at special meals with family or friends. And then it goes on and on here. But anyway, so this is the chart that this Catholic, uh, you obviously, guys, you will not see the word population or overpopulation anywhere in this article. I'm going just, we're about halfway through this. But anyway, they put one of these handy-dandy, little, uh, you know, think personal lifestyle choices you can make from the lowest impact to the highest impact. Yes, and it's, and here is, uh, use LED bulbs, hang up your clothes, recycle, wash clothes in cold water, replace typical car, with hybrid, eat a plant-based diet, replace typical car with electric, use renewable energy at home, avoid transatlantic flights, and of course, the biggest one, live car-free. So, uh, you know, you always see this table uh, about all of these things, and this is usually the, you know, the, the, these top 10 things you can do. Uh, so anyway, so you see this thing, the top 10 choices you can make, uh, the highest choice you can make is getting rid of your car, like a lot of Catholics who need to shuttle around their eight kids to soccer practice and to uh, church service twice a week are going to get rid of their fuck, oops, uh, and get rid of their gas sucking car. So anyway, guys, <clears throat> we're going to go back to this study published in 2017. Okay, this study published in 2017, which examined the effectiveness of different kinds of individual actions a person can take to make any difference uh, at this point to save the planet. We're going to go on to their own link, and we're going to find directly this study I've mentioned many times, and we're going to see that they have their own uh, their own chart in the very study. So what these are, ignore this first column, what these are, starting here, are all the ones that they put in the article we just read about the top 10 things you can do. And what this line is, and, and, and this is completely, uh, d does not begin to show the truth because what this broken line is, so what this is, is weighted on a scale 
of, uh, of, of the reduction in CO2, blah, blah, blah. But what this one is, this first one, which, it, the, see, the, the column only goes to four. There is not, I guess, living car free just breaks a two and all of the other ones on the, on the list, you see, the only one that breaks a two. So at first you think they're saying this column is four, but it's actually 60. It goes up 15 times as high as this. Are you following me? Instead of getting a rating of a four, which in itself is about twice as big as the single biggest, the only thing you can do. It is pretty much, we'll call it 25 times bigger, 25 times bigger than the number one thing you can do according to this article. Uh, and uh, so, Again, as I've said, if you add up every single one of these others in the list that they talked about, you add up every single one of them, uh, it comes out to about one twentieth. Uh, is that right? It adds up to about a two, three, four, five, about a tenth. Uh, you add up every one uh, of the next nine things you can do, which are the things in their list, and you will be maybe 10% of the way to the one thing you can do uh, <clears throat> to reduce your impact on this planet, and that is the thing that is nowhere mentioned in the article I just read, and that would be have one less child. For every one fewer children you have, you will, every time you decide, I guess, to use birth control uh, and do not go out there and, and go forth and multiply to gain dominion over the earth. Every time you decide not to have a child, you are doing more to save this planet 10 times over than every other thing combined from getting rid of your gas sucking car to starting your little vegan diet, so whatever, the usual suspects, nowhere mentioned in the article. And, and even in this study, my only problem with this study, it, it even it, uh, which has been discussed over and over again, even it does not show uh, the carbon you know, the, the carbon re footprint reduction by, ha by having no children. Okay, even built into this uh, is, a, uh, is only one less child if they, if they were really honest and had the column do not breed and have no children, this column, which is already 15 times as big as it appears here, would be 500 times as big uh, as the biggest column that obviously uh, will never be mentioned in, uh, in, in anything ever published by the Catholic uh, Church. Uh, there you go. Uh, so they break all this down to come out uh, that the number one thing to do is do not breed. Okay. Significantly, a U.S. family 
who chooses to have one fewer child would provide the same level of emissions reductions as 684 teenagers who choose to adopt comprehensive recycling for the rest of their lives. Yes. Uh, let's see, let's get down to the final conclusions. Uh, okay, here is the high impact actions have one fewer child rating depending on various variables it gets a rating of 23,700 to 117,000 versus number two living car free uh, getting a rating somewhere between 1,000 and 5,300. This is another way of showing having one fewer and of course having no children at all uh, would send it off the charts. Uh, okay, where are the conclusions? Maybe there's not conclusions. Alright, we have identified four recommended actions which we believe to be especially effective in reducing an individual's greenhouse gas emissions and uh, number one, of course, on the list, having one fewer child. Yes. These suggestions contrast with other top recommendations found in the literature. Do you think so? Yes, I love it. Uh, you, you know, the, the study, the literature links you to claims that their conclusions that having one fewer child is the number one thing you can do contrast with other top recommendations found in the literature. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. Anyway, uh, so this, uh, if you want to, I think I need to send Barbara an email. If you would like to email Barbara Fraser, uh, Barbara Fraser is an NCR climate editor. I'm not sure who NCR is. I'm guessing the C is Catholic, probably National Catholic Reporter or something. Barbara Fraser is NCR climate editor. Her email address is B Fraser. That's B F R. A S E R at N C R Online dot org. B F R A S E R at N C R Online dot org, or you can follow her on Twitter at Barbara Fraser, I guess. So there is Barbara Fraser sharing her big pack of lies. Anyway, uh, it is a hot, sweaty day, and I need to go jump in my outdoor shower. Oh my God.